slightly upside down and inside out here at the Bush Bee Farm. We happen to have a whole lot of commercial hives running around the countryside, but you know, my wife didn't want to be left out, so she thought she wanted a flow hive in her backyard. Now, I'm not sure whether there's going to be flow hive honey <laughs> in a comp competition with the Bush Bee Man honey on the website, but anything's possible. So there might be flow flowers of the backyard, who knows? But anyway, having a very poor attempt at a protest and saying we don't really need one of these flow hives, I would have to say it's actually a piece of bloody furniture. It's pretty incredible. I was actually, like, if you think about it, I know there's a whole lot of controversy out there in the internet world about flow hives and all the rest of it and yada yada. And yes, they have got issues in some respects about harvesting the honey, but just use your brains and wait till the thing gets ready before you harvest the honey. I mean, it's not complicated. I was, I was unimpressed, let me tell you what, when I got told we're getting a, getting a, a new model flow hive. But in, after helping to put it together, and playing around with it, and she's painted the roof red. I don't know whether it's terribly practical, practical for a commercial beekeeper to get a flow hive, but what the hell? It looks bloody good, and who knows? The wife might outcompete me. All right. I don't know. Let's sit that there. Oh. Whew. Oh, what fun. <laughs> oh, I feel like a good, it's cool fun anyway, isn't it? Oh, I don't have to be such an old grump. Right, so the plan I've got going on is we're going to move our bee box that we've put here, we did the other day. We'll put the ladies in our snazzo flowy hivey machine. No, it's not really a machine, but anyway, we'll put the bees in the fancy flow hive. Who knows? I wonder if I'll get the job of turning the key. I'm tipping I'm going to be out here having a go at it anyway. <laughs> this even comes with some cool spirit levels now, so you can actually get the flow, the honey to flow backwards. We'll get to that point when we get some honey to actually turn on, but for right now we've got to set it up. So if you've happened to get a flow hive in the mail, I was talking to the queen breeder dude. <laughs> we were at the class, I've probably mentioned him a few times, and he said he's selling some queen bees to some flow hive people and they'd ring him up a week later and say, well, I've got my queen, where the hell are the bees? So don't be doing that. Just you actually have to get the bees and then maybe you want to requeen them, but they you kind of got to get a swarm or a blooming package of bees. You can't just get the queen and hope she's going to rear a whole heap. She only comes with five workers. I reckon they'd be hard pressed to make a colony out of five workers. They probably couldn't even eat the candy out of the bloody queen cage to get free. But anyway, I digress. I'm gonna go and get my smoker going. I'm gonna get my suit on, cause I'm not such a hero. Pop these ladies in their new home. And then we'll do the grand reveal. Cool, well, here we go. So if you're in your backyard with your new toy, this is how it's done, all right? So follow along. Right, so I reckon this is our hive. So we're gonna move her out the way so we can put our new fangled dangled machinery here. I'm just gonna pop her over here out in the shade for a minute. Oh. We're going to make sure we've got ourselves the right angled angled. Oh, I'm going to face my door away from the evening sun. Where we live, it's jolly hot here in the afternoon. And I figure of that little brown landing board, it might not do them a whole lot of good if it's baking hot. The sun sets over there, so I'm going to face the door away from where the sun's setting. I reckon that's a good plan anyway. Oh, help put it up there level. I'll get told off. <laughs> Uh-oh. Mr. Bush Bee Man. You ruffian. It's just a little bit wonky donk like that, so we're not going to do that. Make sure you get the thing so it doesn't wobble. You don't have to have it on these better blocks. It just happened to be here, so... Oh, I think it's not a bad idea. Level up me jolly ground a bit. What have I got going on? That's got to come up that side a bit too. Oh! <laughs> this might be a bit hairy. What are you doing? Are you doing any good? There we go, that looks pretty good. Now they got all fancy and they've got a blooming proper bottom board now. So if you're in the in the lovely places where you have those horrible Varroa mites, you can actually do your inspection. Get really bored, you've got yourself a little spare spirit level. <laughs> so you can actually check this out. You can pull your bottom tray out and see if you've got any of those horrible little Varroa mites, which is kind of cool. Not that we've got any Varroa mites, but of course, 
these flow hive boys they send these things around the whole planet now so i guess they had to accommodate for the rest of the world luckily down here in oz we don't have them but yeah fingers crossed we won't ever get them but hell it's probably just a matter of time really isn't it so this is our bottom bit which is of course professionally called the brood box well it's really just the blooming place where all the real work's done down here in the brood box this is where all the babies get born and all the action happens and so you've got to have a healthy brood box what's more every you know, probably usually it's good twice a year to actually go through your brood box make sure everything's healthy make sure your queen's laying make sure you know that you haven't got any diseases and that everything's going on and if you don't see any laying pattern happening then you've got to get yourself a new queen so don't forget so even if you're buying a flow hive and technically you don't need to put a bee suit on to get the honey when you do a hive inspection if you're not going to pay someone else to come and do it and you want to do it yourself you probably wouldn't hurt you to get a bee suit and you know, you're probably going to need a really you know you're not probably not going to need an expensive one i mean hell if you've spent over a thousand dollars on a fancy flow hive what's a 300 hundred dollar bee suit doesn't matter, matter does it i mean just go and get one get a bee suit get some gloves get a smoker just you know and then fill the part you know it's kind of cool because then you can post shit on the facebook and go look at me i'm in the yard doing my beekeeping and you can be in the flow club anyway there's my little spiel let's go let's get this ordered out now this is the super box up the top here so we don't really want that and i don't think there's too much happening anyway that's not going to fit on top of here so we're just going to put the super over here on the lawn and figure out how many girls are on there in a minute and hopefully it'll just come apart probably not all right uh, hello ladies <laughs> they're all getting organized in there Gosh. <laughs> do my exercises right let's give them a little bit of smoking up there we go this isn't a crazy populated little hive so that's good but they're going along pretty well <whistles> just have a bit of a peekaboo not ideal here in the shade of course you know i wouldn't want to make my life too easy and be out of the shade but anyway we're going to sit that there for a second if you're doing this just be sure you don't lose your queen because you lose your queen then you're in all sorts of strife i haven't actually had a look at this swarm like brood again i've done it once but i'm just going to have a quick browse through just to make sure they haven't got anything horrible that they brought along with them they seem pretty healthy and pretty happy but i'd hate to put them in my wife's fancy ass flow i've <laughs> jolly things have got some disease that she doesn't want then they'll be like thank you darling what the hell are you done <laughs> you know? what's that hero to asshole quick as that Oof. so anyway just bear with me we're just gonna have a bit of a look anyway you got to do a hive inspection even if you don't have to do it to get your honey you still got to have a look at your lady so have a look over my shoulder and we'll go through it there you go that looks good that's a nice laying pattern nice and fresh so you want to see that that's good so look at that that beautiful solid she's a bit spotty dog but she's had a few hatch out now when you're doing your hive inspection just don't bang anybody bees are not real happy with the whole banging process just try to be nice to them and nice and gentle don't upset them and of course if you do start going into your brood box and you're absolutely covered with bees all over you everywhere and they're attacking you probably go and find yourself a new queen because generally speaking you want them you want them nice and chilled out a bit like this just taking it easy not doing anything too crazy because it's very unpleasant if you're going to have them in your backyard you probably don't want them too hectic when you're having a barbecue <laughs> and you're trying to show off your fancy hive you go over to your fancy flow hive and next thing you know your bloody friends have all been stung to bits i'm pretty sure that wouldn't be impressive so friendly bees is a good option just keep a little bit of smoke don't get too carried away with the smoke because that just makes them eat more honey i wonder where the captain of the guards is it's definitely in here somewhere laying away nicely where are you boss woman here's all the drones now when you first start out you're going to think that's a queen because she, he's nice and big but it's actually just a boy how many frames are we going to get in that box you reckon that's a nice frame of honey i'm going to give them that because then they got something nice bit of stores to eat all right i reckon i'm going to give them that frame even though that's got no brood in it, it's just honey but that'll make them feel nice give them a bit of food yes i know look at that you're in the fancy house just checking to make sure the boss isn't here hopefully she's here somewhere she has to be because she's working really nicely <laughs> she said hello mr bush bee man now being that this box has got a lot, little bit lower bit and you're going to get some of this honeycomb growing on the bottom 
I just like to get that off so it'll fit nicely in our new box. Just make sure there's nobody important sitting on that. And then you want to make sure you've got your nice brood frames and keep them all in all in together. Don't put a bloomin' honey frame in a brood frame because the brood, the girls have got to all work together and keep everything nice and warm so the babies will hatch and then you're on to the next thing. If you're playing around doing this, just try to put things from one box to the next box in the same sort of format, so at least in the same row. Otherwise they get themselves horribly confused and that's what, not what you need. You're meant to be trying to make their life easy, I think. The easier their life is, the more productive they are for you. Just keep that in mind. They're not very angry, which is what you want. You want nice, friendly girls that are all just pleased to work for you. Because there is some, some people that'll tell you that the angry bees work better, but I don't know about that. Personally, I think you just want them nice and friendly, so it's easy to get the job done. So what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I reckon we'll give them this one on the other side, which is the bit more nectar. All right. This morning I was out in the yard checking out some gals that had swarmed into an older box and there were some little, little tiny flea, not whatever they are, they're little like, they're like little baby flies, but they're not really flies. Anyway, there's little bugs there annoying the gals that had swarmed into this box and the guard bees were chasing them around the front of the box and scooping them off. And they were, I guess they were just nipping them. So it's quite fascinating how they just don't like other things in there annoying them. But then again, they get a crazy ass hive beetle in there who knows how to manipulate life and it stays in there and they can't catch it and kill it because it's got too blooming tougher skin. I was watching another thing about wax moths and apparently they can actually vibrate and change their um, rhythm to imitate the queen so as when they sneak into the hive they, the bees don't actually know she's there. And so she can actually go around, lay her little eggs, which obviously turn into the blooming pupae eh, that wrecks everything in your hive. but. How crazy is that? That the moth worked out how to trick the bees so that they wouldn't, and then she has to get out of there within, I think it was about a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes or something. Otherwise her vibrations will not be as good as they should be and then the bees can catch her and kill her. But what, who would have thought? How crazy is that? Mother nature, I tell you what. No wonder David Attenborough spent his whole life checking out what the heck is going on on the planet. Because I haven't actually seen the queen on any of these frames, I'm still being really cautious about who's who or what's going on in here. So you want to make sure you shake all the bees on top of the here. Because <laughs> the last thing you need to do is lose the queen in this project, because that's a bit, well, it's not the end of the world, because they've got some young larvae, they could raise a new one, but it's just, you know, heck, waste another month of their work effort. Because the queen can live on, she can be hiding on the side of the box. You just hope she hasn't decided to run off into the grass or something crazy, because that would be a real pain in the ass. Just be aware, you want to make sure the queen's in your new, in your new setup. It's good if you can actually find it, that's ideal then, but still, you can't have everything. Well, hopefully, anyway, if you don't see the queen when you pop them in your new box, that means you've got to come back in about 10 days and make sure she's still in here. Otherwise, uh, ring up quick and get a new one. So now we just need to put our queen excluder on. Because the last thing you're going to want, and especially in a flow hive, the last thing you're going to want is the jolly queen laying eggs. The idea that the worker bees are of the right size, they can come through here. But the queen bee, she's just that little bit too big to squeeze through this hole, through these holes. So she has to stay down in what we call the brood box and does all the business down there. And the worker bees go up into your flow hive and make your honey for you. So very important piece of equipment. Don't forget to put it on. You just want to place that nicely on there. I'd be fairly sure there'll be disappointment in the house if you don't happen to have that on here. Oh, so this is the this is where all the magic happens in here. You want that oh at the back. Oh my goodness, I'll put it down and I'll show you what's going on. What's going on with that? You don't need that in there. <laughs> here and that. Just make sure your nice little queen excluders organized. Your lovely wife has made that corner cool. She's gone and painted it red. So they reckon it's pretty groovy in here. And you've got your top board, which is basically just to keep everybody cozy. They've even thought of everything else. You can actually take that plug out of there, give them a bit of food if they're really hungry. And of course, this is where the magic bits are. And if you've got one of these in the post, well, you would know that these are in here, wouldn't you? And they all just go along here. And of course, the ladies are gonna, hopefully, in the grand plan of things, they'll come up here. You can open the window and you'll be able to see them come up through here. And when you see that you've got, I don't know, probably four or five frames across that it's all filled up right to the top, 
you could probably safely think that you've got capped honey. If you're not 100% sure where the honey's capped, we can always just pop the lid off and just pull a frame out and just have a look at what's going on on here. That's not against the rules. Because when we're doing like normal honey extraction, you've got to, all your honey frames are all capped off. Because then that means the honey's reduced down to a certain level. So if you've got your flow hive and you've harvested your honey a bit early and it's a bit too much moisture content and it's starting to ferment a little bit, well, next time, just wait a bit longer and let them finish it off. Because the girls actually, when the nectar comes in, they mix it with a bit of water and a bit of stuff. And then they've, they've got to put it in a frame and obviously the cells. And then they fan from the top and blow some more moisture out until eventually they can figure out what the consistency is that they want, the right moisture content. And then they'll put a little wax cap on the top of this and beautiful. Then your honey's ripe, ready to go on your toast. So I guess the point is don't be in a hurry. <laughs> Otherwise you're probably going to harvest some honey and it won't be ready. If you're not 100% sure, I mean you can tell fairly well on the edge here when it fills up. That's the idea of this to be able to see whether the honey's filled up or capped off. If this is right from top to bottom, I'd say you're pretty safe. But if you're not 100%, take the lid off and just pull this up and make sure this is all at least at least 80% capped off. Because sometimes they'll cap one side and not the other side. And I don't know, then that's another excitement. But all in all, I think it's a pretty snazzy bit of garden furniture, isn't it? Isn't it? Pretty awesome. Uh, Alrighty, so now we'll put it all together. <sighs> All of you out there in internet land will be waiting around with bated breath, won't you? Wondering what happens next. We could have a competition if you've got a flow hive and you've just put it together. Well, see if you get see if you get honey first. Kill. Well, there you go. There's a bit of live garden furniture that actually produces something cool. So next time you have your mates around for some dinner and you're going to make honey chicken, bring them out here with a pan and just and pour the honey straight on the chicken out of your hive. How cool would that be? That'd be a bit theatrical, wouldn't it? You'd look pretty special. If you're wondering about my little patch, it's actually a little love heart that my wife put on my pants for me. Isn't that cute? I ripped a jolly great hole in my knee, which wasn't real helpful. And so she said, oh, I asked her if she could patch it up and she said, oh, I'll do it with love. And she's made a little love heart out of bees. How cute is that? Tell you what, I don't know. She's pretty special, that woman.